welcome to a summer special of the Scarlet Night magazine vodcast. In this episode, we're going to be looking at some of the celestial sites that you can look out for during the summer months. Now, the balmy nights at this time of year are a great time to get out under the stars, and as we've said many times on the vodcast, you really don't need a lot of expensive equipment to enjoy astronomy, especially during the summer months. A simple pair of binoculars, for example, at this time of year will show you the star fields of the Milky Way, some of the more prominent star clusters, and even some of the brighter nebulae. In July and August, the star fields of the Milky Way spiral arms stretch right across the sky, and they're a great place to find interesting objects to look at with both binoculars and telescopes. Take the region towards the centre of our galaxy, for example. From the UK, you'll find the star fields of Sagittarius, Scorpius, and Scutum in the south at around 10:30 p.m. in late July and early August, and there's lots to see in this region. Now, from a dark sky sight, you might be able to spot the Lagoon Nebula, which is Messier 8, with the naked eye. You'll find it just above the spout of the teapot asterism in Sagittarius. The Lagoon Nebula is a vast cloud of gas and dust where stars are being born, and we can see it because the radiation from these young stars is causing the gas in the nebula to glow. Here's a sketch I made last year with a small refractor of the Lagoon Nebula, just to give you some idea of what it will look like through a small telescope. If you're using a telescope to look at the Lagoon Nebula, you'll also find the Triffid Nebula, Messier 20, a little way to the north of it. Wandering higher up the Milky Way star fields, you'll find several beautiful open star clusters, such as M23 and M21. If you keep going, you'll eventually come across the nebulae M16 and M17. A small telescope or even a really good pair of binoculars will show these two glowing gas clouds as misty patches of light against the star fields of the Milky Way. And of course, M16, the Eagle Nebula, is famous as the location for Hubble's iconic Pillars of Creation image. Moving higher in the sky, you'll find lots of great targets for a small telescope. The globular cluster M13 in Hercules, for example, looks like a faint, fuzzy ball of light through a small telescope. Hercules is high in the southwest from the UK in mid-August at about 11 p.m. With a larger aperture telescope of around 8 to 10 inches, you start to see more detail, with the cluster becoming a glittering sphere of stars. Nearby, close to the bright star Vega, in the constellation of Lyra, you'll find the Ring Nebula, a glowing shell of gas ejected by a dying star. Through a small telescope, it'll appear as a faint grey ring of light. Very close to the constellation of Lyra, you'll find the unmistakable shape of Cygnus the Swan. Now, the swan's head is marked by the star known as Albario or Beta Cygni, and it's a very interesting star. To the naked eye, it looks like one star, but if you train a small telescope on it, you'll actually see that it's two stars. It's a double star. One of the stars is a gold colour, while the other one is a beautiful blue, and it's a fantastic target for a small telescope at this time of year. Elsewhere in Cygnus, you'll also find the beautiful open star clusters M29 and M39, and a small telescope will show them sparkling away against the rich star fields in this region. Moving farther afield, July and August are a great time to seek out the Andromeda Galaxy, Messier 31. You'll find it by first locating the Great Square of Pegasus. By following the stars away from the top left of the square, you should be able to track down the faint elliptical shape of M31. From a dark sky sight, it's easily visible with the naked eye, but a pair of binoculars will show it more clearly. A small telescope may even give you a glimpse of M31 satellite galaxies, M32 and M110. There's one phenomenon that you definitely don't need any equipment to see during the summer months. Noctilucent, or night shining clouds, appear in the hours of twilight before sunrise and after sunset. They're clouds of tiny ice crystals that appear to glow this ethereal bluish white colour. They do this because they're extremely high in our atmosphere, meaning that they can reflect the light from the sun quite a while after it has set, or before it rises. You'll know you're looking at a noctilucent cloud because they appear to shine against the brighter twilight sky, whereas your run-of-the-mill clouds tend to appear in silhouette. If you want to take a picture of a noctilucent cloud display, then I'd recommend setting up your camera on a tripod to keep it sturdy and secure, and then take exposures of about 10 to 30 seconds in length, with an ISO sensitivity of about 200 to 400. If you do capture some great astro images over the summer months, do send them into our monthly hotshots competition. The email address is on screen below. But from me, that's it. So clear skies, and I'll see you again next time.